beautiful geekies and welcome to my spoilers review of the BFG. If you haven't seen the movie yet, here's the spoilers free movie review. Go there, check it out, give it your comment before you watch the movie and after you watch the movie or if you don't care about spoilers, stick right to this one because here's where we're going to have the biggest conversation about this movie. And let's start right off with the best part of the movie and that is the directing, the flawless directing of Steven Spielberg with the shots he does, he transmits you that Steven Spielberg magic that hasn't been in his movies for so long only because he has not directed these types of fantasies or these big blockbusters even though you can't quite call the BFG that because flop the BFG transmits you that magic of classic Steven Spielberg. I also really like and respect the fact that he stuck to his guns both as a storyteller and as a director. He knew this was a children's story, he knew this was a children's book and he made a children's movie. Through and through the BFG is a children's film. It does not try to be anything else, it does not disguise itself as something else and it does not try to make you believe that it is something else. Through and through, this is a children's movie. From the way the characters interact, to the way they are, to the way the good guys are, the way the bad guys are, the way the story unfolds, the way the characters are presented, the way Steven Spielberg plays with the lights and the shadows, the way he shows the action, even though there isn't much in this movie, but even the themes of this movie, those are for children. It is a movie that adults can certainly appreciate it is a movie that certainly is not dumbed down for dumb children. It is a movie that everyone can enjoy, but it is, in its heart, a kid and a kid's movie. Of course, kids will very much enjoy this movie much more than adults. And that's not a bad thing. Disney movies are made for children, but they can be children's movie or family movies. And that is the difference. The BFG is most certainly a family movie movie. There are two sequences that I cannot decide which one is my favorite in this movie and one is when he goes to catch the dreams with Sophie. That you have the tree and the lake and you go through the lake and it reverses the image upside down. It is a beautiful scene. As far as everything goes on there, it is absolutely perfect. Acting, shots, writing, the music by John Williams, oh my god, the cinematography is freaking beautiful. I really enjoy the scene, it is one of my two favorites from the movie, but here is where we get presented to the biggest issue I have with the movie, and we will talk about that in a few moments. My second favorite sequence in this movie is when the giants go into the BFG's cave and they start smashing the dreams around and after that scene where you get to know that he already had taken a kid and made friends with him and then he met a horrible end being eaten by the other giants. Now they're trying to find Sophie, they're smashing his dreams, they're taking away his life's work and Sophie finds the room of the kid. Funny enough, my second favorite part of the movie is where my second problem with the movie also emerges. In that scene when they start smashing everything around, the music starts off very funny, very sarcastic, but then it gets dumbed down to really scary and sad music. And that's what the scene in the movie gave to me. It gave me that feeling that, alright, this is going to be a funny scene, they're going to find a whimsical way to get the giants out of there, but no, they start smashing everything around. This is really much more serious than you initially realize, and that is the magic and genius of Steven Spielberg. I already talked about the CGI and the acting by Mark Rylance, but let's talk about it a little bit more. It is flawless. You believe Mark Rylance is a giant, you believe that giant is real, and Mark Rylance did one thing that sometimes takes an actor a little too far, and that is becoming yourself through a character. That's never a good thing, and Mark Rylance did not do that. Mark Rylance became a character, and he took the character and made him real. Even though the giant clearly looks like it was a CGI version of Mark Rylance, you believe that this giant is real. It feels like he is there with Sophie to take her away, putting his hand through the window, then jumping around over bridges and meadows. 
and going to giant country. That is the beautifulness of his performance and of the CGI motion capture work. Ruby Barnhill is also really great. She encapsulizes every single kid that she will ever know. When a kid is a dreamer, he's a dreamer or she's a dreamer. And a kid will not be afraid of being known as a dreamer. Sophie was a true dreamer. She believed in things and she went out for it. As I said in my spoilers free review, she did not get stopped by fear, she got motivated by fear and that's what took her on her mission throughout this movie. And that scene where the giants are destroying BFG's work and she finds the room of the boy who used to live there and she finds the picture of the Queen of England she got motivated even more even though she had just heard that traumatic story and now she finds the room where that kid used to live in and that is one of the most beautiful parts of this movie and one of the parts that made me love that scene even more. Now let's talk about my issues with the BFG. Remember how I told you that the dream catching sequence I had a big problem with? Because they find that nightmare that you have done something really bad and you will never be forgiven, you can never turn back. And then he keeps that nightmare and he makes it out to be this really bad thing that has happened and we cannot let it go again. It has to be trapped in that little glass box. We're going to keep that to the end of the movie. Something really bad is going to happen. Well, after the scene where the giants start smashing BFG's work, they get taken to the Queen's Palace. And that took me completely out. They make this dream for the queen and that they get to meet her. They give her a nightmare to believe them that they get presented to the BFG. And I like the whole part where they're devising a plan with the army and there they're going into giant country to capture the giants. However, my problem is that the tone completely changed in that part. It went too stall. It went too numb in that part. It seemed like the movie was dead. There was no magic left. There was no fun left. The characters in that part of the movie seem to have been just doing stuff that was really not important and it really took me out of the movie just because it was too jarring. Even the cinematography kind of changes, not to bad cinematography in any way, but it seems like a completely different movie and a completely different setting. And this is one issue that came as a consequence of having that part of the movie with the Queen and everything. Rafe Spall, who has this walkie-talkie to communicate with the other guards, I really got out of the movie with no notion on what is the time frame in this. I really got a vibe of the 1800s, maybe the early 1900s in England, but then he has a walkie-talkie and did walkie-talkies exist back then? And whose queen is this supposed to be? That was really jarring because it doesn't really give you any clearance on what is going on in that scene. It just says that this is the queen, this is England, they're at the palace, they're devising a plan, the British are going to help the VFG. Period. But then they get back to giant country and Sophie and the BFG are just sitting around waiting for some kind of moment to give the nightmare to the giants and when they give the nightmare to the giants it spreads out, goes into their nostrils and it's over. The nightmare was used and it's over. There was no big imagery, there was no big consequence. It felt like it was just a plot device, a MacGuffin let's say, and not a really important one at that. Look at the Cosmo Cube in the Avengers and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, it's a MacGuffin, but you really understand the importance of that and you get the consequences of that. Here, you really didn't. The nightmare went up the giant's nostrils and then they admitted they were bad giants and that was the nightmare that they felt bad for what they had done. Really? That's the biggest consequences to these assholes that ate a kid alive? It was really just blah as a consequence, as an ending to this movie that I was really enjoying. And I still enjoyed it from then on. It just felt like, fine, I guess. It was not up to the standards that this movie was giving me in every single aspect. Then you get to see the giants getting taken to an island, they get there left alone, they are forced to eat vegetables for the rest of their lives, and Germain Clement's giant is up on the top of the island and he's looking out at the choppers as they fly away. And then apparently we got a narration from Sophie and she got separated from the BFG and my issue is why? You can stay there now, it's safe. The people, at least at the palace, know of the existence of the BFG. So why aren't you hanging out together, living together, helping each other around? Why isn't the BFG taking the kids from the orphanage, taking them to giant country and let them be free and happy and not get badly treated at the orphanage? I think that would have been a much 
better ending to the movie and a much more gratifying one. You just don't get a notion of why Sophie and the Giant need to separate now that the Giants are gone. And that was really my biggest issue with the movie, is that it is a good story, it has good characters, fantastic directing, it has good writing, but the ending and the consequences of the movie and of what is going on in the story are just really bleh. And this movie promised you so much, it kind of disappoints itself of what it is promising. And as an audience, it's only natural that you get disappointed as you go out of this movie. The BFG is definitely not a flawless movie. It is definitely a great movie. It will never get in the top 10 Spielberg movies of all time. That's just a given and that only speaks to the quality of this director. But it is definitely a movie you can enjoy and it is definitely a movie that does not fool you. This movie is for kids. This movie tells you it's for kids in every single aspect of it and you as an adult can definitely enjoy it. And even though I have never watched E.T., I can definitely tell you from what I hear of other people that love that movie that this is definitely the E.T. for the new generation. And even people who have loved that movie when they saw it as kids, now as adults, some people, some of them, tell me that it doesn't hold up. So that's that. But those are the spoilers for the BFG. What did you think about it? Did you see it? Did you not? Did you like the book when you were young? Are you still hopeful for this movie if you haven't seen it? Let me know all that in the comments below. And also, I didn't ask you in my spoilers-free review for the BFG, but let me know what is your favorite Steven Spielberg movie to date. Let me know all that in the comments below. And guys, my new Q&A is underway. You can start leaving your questions in the comments below by leaving the hashtag Squad q and I'll leave the hashtag in the description below, as well as my links to my Facebook, Instagram, and my Pop Price Guide page. And you guys can stalk me on the internet through that. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please click on the button below the video box if you like these reviews and you want to see more special videos coming. And join our beautiful geeky community, and we can be geeky united this week. I'm going to Star Wars Celebration, but before I leave, I will give you my Miles Ahead movie review. And if you don't know yet and you are new here, I will leave a very special link to a very special video right here. Thank you so much for watching my Spoilers BFG review, I hope you enjoyed it. Over here is my Legend of Tarzan Q&A, of course, the Q&A for this month of July. And in August, of course, it will be the Suicide Squad Q&A, after I give you my Suicide Squad movie review, spoilers free and spoilers review. And of course, if you guys are going to Star Wars Celebration, let me know if you are there in the comments below and I hope to meet you guys there. I'm looking forward to go there, my second time in London and my first time in such a big convention. And of course, I'll hope to see you in all the reviews and special videos coming to the Geekness Overlord channel. Cheers!